interested in the digitalization of treasury operations, but you're in the right place. Welcome to CurrencyCast. My name is Augustine McKinley. I'm the Senior Financial Writer at Cantox and your host. In this episode, we have the pleasure to welcome Frédéric Chappelle, partner at PwC Luxembourg, and Corentin Maric, Manager, Advisory, Finance and ESG Transformation at PwC Luxembourg as well. Frédéric and Corentin, a warm welcome to you. And thank you for being uh, for joining us today in this episode of Currency Cast. Thank you very much for having us. This episode is sponsored by PwC, a community of solvers. All right, uh, Frédéric and, and Corentin, can you introduce yourself and tell us about your work at PwC? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, thank you. Um, so I'm Frédéric, so I'm technology partner in uh, Luxembourg, leading finance transformation, uh, but also uh, technology practice uh, around financial application and solution, and definitely uh, super interested by uh, developing and implementing treasury solution. All right. And yourself, Corentin? So I'm Corentin. I've been here at PwC Luxembourg for now seven years, working for a uh, Fred in his uh, technology team with a focus on finance transformation and as well uh, touching the new topics of ESG and and of course I'm uh, very eager to, to learn and work over the treasury and, and currency uh, topics. All right, so I think we can start with the, um, the main topic today of the conversation, which is business process automation in general and in the context of treasury operations in particular. At Cantox, of course, we are um, very much interested in that subject. So let's start with a, say, a broad question. What do you see are the main pain points, um, well, tackled by business process automation in general and, and then in, in finance and in treasury operations? Uh, maybe uh, I will take that first one, if I may say. Usually what we see is that there is a strong gap between what is expected by the clients and what is delivered by the uh, software providers or the integrator. Uh, the issue is that it's not coming per se from the providers or the integrators, it's more about understanding exactly what are the needs that should be fulfilled by, by the solution and as well the preparation. And usually those two key, key uh, let's say, steps are not well considered or not as uh, enough dedicated in order to make sure to guarantee the success of the, of the implementation. Yes, indeed. Uh, before starting uh, to look to automation, first you need to review your process, uh, making them probably leaner, focus on best practices, because we see many, many clients that they are really, at the, with past implementation with system integrators, they are highly customized. And then, for sure, if you want to automate, you need to review your process, review your ways of working before thinking to automate. Because if you move too fast, just on looking tools, solution and a system integrator, you will probably miss uh, the most important part is really the value you will get on transforming and adopting best practices. Then you can later on move on automation. And it's much more a top-down approach when you look first to your finance transformation, the way you engage, and then we are looking to a solution that can enable that transformation uh, and not making the opposite, just looking to uh, uh, any digital tool uh, for automation and then going up because usually we can see a lot of failure in this kind of project. Right, so you see a sort of a timetable for implementing of automation, is that right? Now, at Cantos, we're uh, fans of thinking automation in three dimensions, let's say cost, risk and growth, right? By cost, we understand not only the say reducing the cost of hedging so for example in the event of unfavorable forward points if i'm selling in a currency that trades at a forward discount i'd i'd be doing well to uh, to delay hedge execution with with conditional orders but also reducing operational costs in terms of risks i could obvious quite obviously it's about uh, removing currency risk with as much as uh, precision as possible but also removing those, say, operational risks like 
spreadsheet risk, the risk of human error, the person risk and the like. But we put decisively the emphasis on growth, right? We always uh, so emphasize growth oriented automation, telling our clients, look, if you have um, currency risk under control, you can start confidently selling in the currencies of your customers, buying in the currencies of your suppliers and taking advantage of those uh, profit margin enhancing opportunities. Do you agree with a with a, a broad view of, say, growth oriented automation? Uh, I think that's among the, the main uh, the, the main motivation to transform, of course, growth is one of the main uh, trigger, but of course, and I, I think you already mentioned it a bit, uh, it's a, 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 as well about risk mitigation and uh, control framework implementation as well. So through automatic automation, you can gu guarantee the implementation of the control framework, mitigate risk. We have as well you know what we see a lot of, of tools providing the, the ability to steer the, the performance of the company, which is very key. Uh, especially uh, today in, in those time of uh, high, uh, let's say, disruption in, in the economics and, and the, global, the global economy in general. So there, there are different triggers and triggers for transformation, which will not only, only be costs or, or growth. You can see through different angles. All right, let's now uh, um, tackle the issue of people and automation. And say, broadly speaking, at Cantox, Sometimes we know that 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 raises some some fears in some quarters. Am I going to be replaced or not? Or am I am I going to lose control? And we decidedly take the view that um, by removing those time consuming, those error prone and resource intensive tasks, automation not only doesn't weaken control, it reinforces control. But now control is done at a say perhaps a more strategic level and with an added bonus, right? You have more time as a treasurer to devote to, say, um, or improving your cash flow forecasts. So what is your view here? Do you see automation as a factor that it weakens, that strengthens control? Or what is your point of view? I would say that you are reinforcing because uh, as you can see still in many large companies, uh, even if they are equipped with, uh, with a, tra a TMS, uh, Treasury Management System, even quite an advanced one, you can still see many emails with Excel because they have not all the workflow set up and they are still exchanging a lot of information out of uh, system. And in addition, uh, they are not automated enough. So this means that um, they are still spending a lot of time at transaction level and uh, cross-checking element where if they were fully automated, they will just control what happened and out of the control of what happened, they will be able to focus much more on the insight, the forecast and, and looking as a business partner much more than just really focusing still on a lot of transactions. So this is probably one important area, but to reach that level, probably we need to upskill the treasurers because as in many areas in, in financial functions, we, we clearly see that people, as a, it's a little bit like the people who are fearing today chat GPT uh, because uh, for consultants they can really develop a proposal uh, on chat GPT. But I think that what we need to do is educate ourselves, train ourselves, being stronger to be sure that we can cope with the new challenges because we like or we don't like chat GPT or artificial intelligence this is coming so it's much better to be proactive and being equipped and really looking to the, the new ways of working and reinforcing control by automation that just keep uh move with kind of resistance to change that we also frequently see in adopting i would say a new solution and new automation all right Frederick. i see the the temper the temperature is going to uh, rise a little bit with as we tackle artificial intelligence because I have I'm really really very interested in having your views before that however let's uh, talk one last issue on the broad topic of of automation and we mentioned right now I think you mentioned uh, treasury management systems or TMSs right and well that's uh, undoubtedly one of the 
most important innovations in in the space in in recent years um and of course we welcome that um what uh treasury management systems do in terms of of digitizing the uh, the treasury operations in general but we are somehow um skeptical about the possibilities or the capabilities of say most tmss to really uh, be an effective tool in terms of of currency management let me give you just two examples so on the one hand they appear to lack what we at Cantox call a, a strong fx rate feeder that's a strange expression but it, it denotes like the idea that the 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 finance team you know, feeds so uh, so to say the commercial teams with only the fx rate they need for pricing purposes could be the spot rate the three month forward rate the six month forward rate with the markups per client segment and per currency pair and that is not definitely as uh the way we see things the usual functionality of uh, of treasury management systems another one another area where it there might be lacking is in what we call combinations of hedging programs where you need to gather information from different parts of the company right so for example the the forecast for the uh for the budget year and those firm sales orders or firm commitments so what is your view there on on the, the advantages but maybe also on the shortcomings of of tmss especially me in in regards to to currency management if i may tackle that one so i think it was pretty well presented by uh, francois masculier very known in the treasury sector let's say in, with his technology landscape uh, map where you can see all of the the solution that are uh, available in the market and you can see that there is plenty of tms but plenty of other softwares which are delivering very specific services so when you need to go for a new solution you should first understand exactly what you need and not only consider the tms but consider rather a treasury platform or a working capital platform where the tms will take let's say a significant uh, volume of processes but then that we could call maybe core processes and then the rest should be specific to your own business and, and to your own needs and then see what could be the potential integration with best of breed solution or even sometimes in-house processes that could be very standard that, that will not require that much, that level of automation you don't always need a ferrari sometimes you just need a, a Renault twingo let's put it that way what i can also add that typically uh usually you need more than one tool because you have usually a, a part of the minimum setup of treasury in in your uh, if you're an operational company in your erp but you always need an extended solution but extended solution also uh rely on the needs that you have uh, again according your industry and your exposure to i would say the the euro versus uh, many other currencies but it also could be linked also to the edging that you have on fuel if you are in, in a cargo so uh, this this must re really look at, at the length of your industry because again for some industry uh, there are we say relevant solutions but usually no what we see more and more is a kind of best of breed approach when you need to play with some building block where you have i would say kind of a, a main standard TMS that you need to complement by your, I would say, specific needs when you want to be best in class. Because at the end, what you want to really achieve in this journey is to reach probably not for every function the best in class, but for some of them where you are really unique and you want to be stronger or safer. Huh? Because again, as we discussed at the beginning, is performance and risk. These are probably the area where you need to reinforce, I would say, your standard TMS or best practice TMS by this kind of uh, specific add-on. And you definitely, let's think that um, FX and, and, and all the currency are usually uh, an area where the client needs to be better covered. And this is why as well, when you are trying to build your future IT architecture for your uh, treasury platform or working capital platform, 
it should be done in collaboration between treasury team but of course IT to make sure that we are having this holistic view and understanding of the tools and way they can integrate as well. Now, uh, gentlemen, let's uh, discuss that um, that idea that, of course, you already mentioned, and is artificial intelligence. Now, I work at Cantox as a financial writer. I write a lot of the material that we produce for the marketing department for uh, prospects and clients. I'm going to tell you that I just hired a writing assistant. Now, that writing assistant is is Chat GTP, right? Of course, and it's providing me valuable uh, services. Now, I know that you at PwC have conducted or are conducting lots of activities with also artificial intelligence, let's call it AI in in business process automation in general. There are three areas from what I've seen in, in your work that are of interest to us, and it's namely pricing, forecasting and and simulation. I'm going to ask you, the, the next question is going to be specifically on, on forecasting or cash flow forecasting. But for now, um, uh, Frédéric and Corentin, we need to be enlightened. Tell us more about the significance of, let's say, uh, well, chat GTP in general, but isn't it creating a or an earthquake, everybody seems to talk here about it. Tell us more about the the implications that you see uh, going forward in in finance and in, in treasury management. I will say that we can talk about chat GPT like we can talk about blockchain. But those are, let's say, disruptive technology that will definitely shape the, the, the future of, of finance and, and all organizations are working in general. But still, uh, people are not, yet, uh, are not yet educated enough and mature enough to truly understand conceptually how it's working. So for example, blockchain will for sure shape organization in the future, but you are not seeing an organization that clearly still understand. There is still quite a, a black hole. And on the, on the other side, you cannot run if you, you're, you are not even walking. So we will not talk about AI to a client which is still working over unstandard uh, processes and which is still uh, lacking automation in this company. You should go step by step with AI being the ultimate step. So, and I think this is how uh, Frederick uh, introduced it at the beginning. We should start with the basics, fix the basics and then level up when possible. A, a use case that you are developing in PwC for, for, for the moment for some, some clients, uh, it's about uh, moving from budget. So we have still many clients working on annual budget and, and we are promoting that they move on a 12 months rolling forecast. Huh? So this is the first move huh? to in order to avoid to start a year because you know we have uh, many crises, geopolitical incertitude, uncertainties, and things like that. So we have the, the energy price uh, up and down uh, with the, the gasoline, the gas, electricity. So uh, as we are living in that kind of uncertainties, we are more and more promoting to our client to move to uh, a yearly exercise of budgeting uh, with fp a to another one that is 12 months rolling forecast because it's nurturing you every two, three months to see your rolling forecast. You are improving already quite naturally uh, your uh, figures and the target that you want to achieve. But also when you start to that move, then if when you start to have reliable data, you can start to look to algorithm and to improve your simulation with if the energy pricing is climbing or is decreasing, and then you can probably better adjust. But this is first use case when we start, I will say, quite basic budget to forecast. And then from the forecast, we can start to apply some algorithm of, with AI to try to nay down to better figures and better projections to, to be sure that you can also better steer uh, your profitability uh, at the end. Let me go to 
Uh, the um, my maybe last question on that that involves uh, AI or artificial intelligence, and it was about uh, well a few months ago that in in Luxembourg you were at the Atel conference, and you discussed I remember I think the um, the topic of uh, using uh, artificial intelligence for improving your cash flow forecast. Is that is that all right? I I'll tell you. We have some, maybe some um, out of consensus views on this, but I'd like your opinion on on how you would use artificial intelligence there in terms of improving your your cash flow forecasts. I, I believe you are making reference to the the conference that was given in the partnership with the uh, evidence. Uh, yes, that's right, right, right with François Mascalier, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so basically, this this software enables you to through AI to anticipate and improve your working capital by optimizing uh, your uh, accounts receivable management based on the payment behaviors of your customers. So it's a very flexible and smooth to implement solution that can really help you in a very short amount of time to increase your working capital. So here it's very specific, but showing very good results in a uh, in a very short amount of time and i think if we can make the connection with end-to-end -end versus discrete uh, transformation this is exactly a, a good example because you are not touching the full uh, value chain you are not touching all of the processes but through discrete transformation you can already get very uh, significant results um, but that's on the account receivable parts. Uh, maybe uh, for example, but yeah. yes, if, if it, at the peak of the energy crisis, we we saw some uh, company uh, nearly uh, bankrupted because uh, I would say they were uh, selling fixed term contract to the consumers, but at the same time they were not really covered by fixed. Uh, price uh, because they was buying and selling it was uh, energy brokerage and, and they were buying at, at current price so for sure with that kind of approach the, the cash flow uh, forecast was not accurate and at the end they finished by have to pay much more than what they collect from the consumers so they bankrupted very fast so this is why the, the accuracy on your uh, cash flow definitely on, on your currency but also with the the, with the currency management management is, is really key because when you are having this kind of huge changes sometimes within a week, uh, you can uh, be in failure of payment and then exposed to bankruptcy very, very fast because you are not really able to manage your cash flow forecast through, uh, and your currency management. So it, for some companies, it could be really critical. Right, I can see that. All right. Now, um, let's move to the, uh, maybe to the the final parts of this conversation, I'd like to tackle the issue of uh, of silos in in technology and how uh, how technology can help companies removing those remove those silos. It looks like a like a fancy word, like a buzzword. It is not definitely not from our perspective, right? For so for example, we we're seeing in the in the travel industry, something is really interesting. Some, some of the most sophisticated operators there, like, um, like uh, the online tour operators, they're really, really uh, tech savvy, and they know how to uh, to use currency management, automated currency management, to buy in the in the currency of their suppliers, to uh, and then to capture those FX markups on the selling side. But it appears that is not the case for hotel chains and here we have we see the big big potential too um so again as i mentioned at the beginning to to uh, use automated pricing solutions to allow those commercial teams to to price with all the rates they need so that they could offer um, their customers local currency prices exactly the way otas do those so all those uh, more savvy uh, tech uh, so participants in, in the travel industry. So once again, a little bit uh, broadly, do you see potential there for, for technology in general to help companies remove those silos and, and well, um, increase their, their, their potential and increase their uh, so, um, 
sales potential by being at the same time more competitive while well um, protecting their budget margin the budgeted uh, profit margins yeah so um i think we already mentioned that transformation and any product of transformation should be uh thought ahead so you should plan it you should make sure that you have the right governance and the right stakeholders around the table when whenever you launch a transformation if you want to break the silos you should make sure that the people that you should be making sure that will be communicating are involved in the project governance and in the definition of the ambition and the vision of the project if those people are, are left aside you cannot expect them to be uh, collaborating with you if they have no view or understanding of what's the purpose of the transformation and what are the expected expected results then as well to make sure of the the quality uh, of your transformation you should always consider at least at PwC we believe that those four pillars should be always considered so what is the the vision the strategy what do we do with people and the organization because if you put let's say a new tool or new technology you should always consider people and organization processes and controls and finally systems and data here technology those are let's say the two prerequisite before launching any any kind of project and i think there is as well the concept of business partnering that should be uh, considered and that we believe in at PwC which is which can be enabled through technology but if you don't have any upskilling or training plan uh, aside of this you you will miss that point so it, it, it's a, it's a, let's say a combination of very different uh, factors that if you are leaving one aside you might miss the, the objective of the business partnering and the breaking of the silos. Yeah, and I would say that the fact that you have usually a fragmented uh, IT landscape where you have usually a CRM connecting to a pricing tool, at the end you have an ERP with all the finance backbone, but if you want to look to the revenue management, it's again another tool, treasury another one so at the end you have such a fragmented landscape that you cannot see the end-to-end -end. and for sure if you want to automate but it's nearly impossible because it's so complex and the technologies are different the ways of working are different and the people at different locations are not working exactly the same way on the same solution so at the end as everything is fragmented it's very difficult to steer and to automate so one very important way of working is always to look to end-to-end uh, -end business case and not just to see commercials versus financials because at the end if you have not the whole view on, on the process and where you can deal with uh, currency and when you can edge and make it, probably because at the end everyone wants to protect his profitability and the bottom line so if you want to really have this i would say bottom line perspective definitely you need to have an integrated view on the way you are engaging from commercial to financials to be sure that when you are looking at the bottom line with your review management you are at all of the stages including definitely currency management and with automated currency management it will be easier you have the full value chain uh, and also uh, securing your cash yeah well absolutely here uh, both uh, Corentin and, and Frederic you touched on on topics like governance fragmentation silos and uh, that leads me to maybe the, the last question of of uh today's uh, today's episode and it, it's got to do with also um, material that I, I i know you you produce at, at pwc and it's well of course the topic of resistance to change right or, or maybe the conservatism bias that we see at many companies at, at cantos we um we were keen to say that this in fact it's not our competitors. It is the, that conservatism bias that is our, our, our worst, our, our worst, our, our toughest competitor. Do you see it that way, or and how could you, or how can we, so um, take steps to to overcome that resistance to change? I think nobody likes change, even in our personal life. So <laughs> this is something that definitely, uh, as a consultant we need to deal with and how do you want people to to change if you don't involve them meaning that change management should be since the day one even the day zero so maybe at the inception of the project 
and throughout the project. So you should make sure that you have the right governance, the right stakeholders, that they are aware of the ambition and the vision of the project, about the consequences and the expected results. The vision should be top down, but of course as well bottom up, otherwise you might lose them. If they are not convinced that this particular technology will help them to, to work better, to break the silos, to, to, to have this new concept of business partner within the, their business, they will, let's say, uh, sabotage it. So you, you really must make sure that they're on board and fully aware of what's happening and this is at the end for their own benefit. This is why, again, I think upskilling before uh, initiating any transformation is very important because they make they are at that time more acquainted of what's happening because we see many clients moving for uh, a new system in implementation, but they are just copying as is. So what is usually a, a strong failure due to the conservatives because it's 20 years that I'm treasurer, it's 20 years that I'm efficient. Why do I need to change? <laughs> and this is exactly why you need to change because definitely the world is changing, the way we are dealing with currency is changing, the system are changing, the process are changing. So by, by definition, you need uh, to adopt uh, best practices, new standard because 20 years ago, uh, there was no AI, no cloud solution so everything is changing very fast and if you want to stay relevant because again you are working in a competitive market you are not implementing a treasury system or a currency management system just for the pleasure to implement it you're implementing it because you want to be efficient effective and to preserve your margin and profitability so this is a must have but to, to reach that must have you need to equip your team to upskill them and to uh, to make really the, the fact that adopting new solution is best for the whole company ecosystem. It's not only for the CFO, for the treasurer, it's the end-to-end -end value chain. This is why we do believe that starting by a very clear and strong business case and in this business case, a compelling case for change Because if it's just a benefit and then we have a right, okay, it's very good. But out of this, and even starting by this, is a compelling uh, case for change that will nurture the business case. But if you have not the case for change with very clear pain points and the way we will tackle it to ease the life of the people tr making the transaction and, and the day-to-day -day business, it's, it's a high chance of failure. Yes, absolutely. All right, so um, Frédéric Chappelle, partner at PwC Luxembourg, Quentin Maric, manager, advisory finance and ESG transformation at PwC Luxembourg. So really, really, it was fantastic to uh, having you on, on our podcast on CurrencyCast. Uh, we've covered a lot of topics. We, we started with the general aspects of business process automation. We dealt with uh, risk, cost, growth, discrete versus end-to-end -end automation and control. We moved to treasury management systems. And then you enlightened us uh, about artificial intelligence, the hottest topic at the moment, right? We finally um, made some points about uh, how to remove those silos. And as you said, uh, so Frederic, how to upskill in order to, to uh, combat that resistance to change. Gentlemen, is there something that you would like to add? I would say thank you very much because for us, it's for us very interesting to be able to share with you uh, what's currently happening on the market and definitely uh, solutions like you are developing are more and more adopted and I think these trends will, uh, will move forward. So I think very interested to, to look what's coming. Same for me. Thank you very much for uh, joining and participating to this podcast. Very very uh, interesting for us yeah thanks all right uh, that's great then i'm sure we'll have you on in another episode of currency cast in the meantime au revoir and merci thank merci, you merci <laughs> thank you pwc for sponsoring this episode <laughs>